Yo, what's up, guys? So we're doing our Mod 18 quiz review on volume. So key idea for all of these ones, there's going to be formulas throughout this entire thing. However, the formula that I taught in class, the volume for all prisms and cylinders um, is going to be uh, your area of your base multiplied by the height that is perpendicular to the base. So on pretty much all these questions, we're gonna first figure out what the area of the base is and then multiply by that height perpendicular. There might be one or two situations where you have to do something different. Maybe we've got a cone or a sphere. We'll see if that actually shows up. I don't see one on the uh, the front page here. All right, so let's do it. So we have the volume of this triangular prism. Um, so the key here is the base. The base is gonna go through the entire object. So many people first think about the base as what's on the ground, but the base actually in this problem is the triangle because it goes all the way through the object. Now you could have figured that out from the wording of the question. Because it says triangular prism, that has to be the base. Likewise, in the next problem, it says trapezoidal prism. So that has to be the base um, of this one. And that's gonna be very, very common for, throughout um, uh, these types of problems. All right, so let's do area of the base. Um, for this one is gonna be one half times your uh, length times the height, because you find the area of a triangle. If you want to know where that one half, the six and the five came from, it's that formula that's right above it. The uh, base of that triangle is that one half times six times five. And you throw all that into your calculator. You don't even really need a calculator because half of six is three and three times five is 15. Um, and then the volume is going to be the area of the base times the height of the solid, 15 times eight quick metal mass is going to tell you that it's 120 um, if you plug that into your calculator. And we do want to make sure we have those correct units, centimeters cubed. Beautiful. Let's move on to the next problem. Here we go. So we have the volume of this trapezoidal prism. So um, when I taught the area of a trapezoid, uh, you know, when I was doing my area of a trapezoid formula in class with your notes, I wrote it the more standard h over 2 multiplied by base 1 plus base 2 more formula where you put the height in front. Not a requirement here. A lot of books still use this method too. They're, they're both uh, completely reasonable. Um, but uh, our height for this one is going to be uh, 8, the up and down part of the trapezoid, divided by 2. And then the base, the bottom of the trapezoid there uh, for this problem, the bases and trapezoids are the parallel sides. In this case, it is the bottom 12 plus the top one, which is six up there. And um, throwing all that into our calculator, we're going to have four multiplied by 18. That's going to give you 72. Um, and then now our volume is going to be 72 multiplied by the area of the base multiplied by the height of the solid again, it's the part of the solid that goes all the way through. In this problem, it's the only number that hasn't been used yet, that number four. Um, 72 times four is going to be 288 with our centimeters cubed. Nice. All right. Question three. What is the volume of the cylinder? Use this little formula. Um, so we have pi r squared h. I don't know why that h is capitalized, really should not be capitalized, uh, but that's okay. Um, this one is just right away. It just gives it away. This right here is the area of the base, pi r squared, because it's a circle. So we just put pi multiplied by 10 squared multiplied by five. As a reminder, when you're plugging this into the calculator, you don't use the pi. The reason why you're not using that pi is it'll give you the decimal answer, and we want our answer in terms of pi. So we'll type in 10 squared times 5. 10 squared is 100. Multiplied by 5 is 500. And put a pi on there. Beautiful centimeters cubed. And that will be our final answer. Moving on over here. What is the volume of this figure? And it tells you pi r squared minus pi r squared, big R minus little r. And we can just plug it directly in. That's totally fine with me. So we're going to go volume is equal to pi multiplied by the big radius squared. That's going to be 8 squared minus pi times the uh, little radius squared. Oh, I forgot the h. Oh, I see what they're doing. They're doing the H on the outside. That's okay, too. I'll accept that. I'll accept that. So the volume, um, so is so we're going to use this as our area of the base, pi times 4 squared. I'm sorry for, like, mentally pausing there. That right there is the area of the base. So you're taking the big circle, subtracting the small circle, and then you're multiplying it by that height. So I'm good at math, but I'm not doing all that in my head. Remember, we're skipping the pi. So when we're typing all this into the uh, the calculator, we skip that pi, parentheses, 8 squared minus 4 squared, and the parentheses, multiply by 13. 
beautiful 624, but don't forget to put the pi back into your answer. That's going to be a common mistake students are going to make almost guaranteed. Put that pi back in. Pretty please. Move on to the next one. So uh, this next one was the volume of the equilateral triangular pyramid. So as a reminder for pyramids, all pyramids are going to be similar to our area of the base times the height of the solid. It's going to be one third times the area of the base times the height perpendicular to the base. Um, so the same thing as this over here, it's given to you in the formula, but this is the way I presented it in class. I want to make sure you are aware. The This uh, formula over here in class, I wrote it like this. I wrote the area of an equilateral triangle. I put these little dots to denote that it was an equilateral triangle. That is a Mr. Richards made up thing. However, what's not made up is putting the rad three on top over here instead of um, off to the right hand side. So this is kind of the more kind of regular way of writing it. Um, and then uh, when this particular question, we have a rad three over four multiplied by six squared. And just like pi, we don't put that square root of three when we put it in there. So in some sense, it actually makes more sense to leave the formula the way it was. Because when I do type it into the calculator, I'm going to be doing my alpha, oops, you can't do it that way in this calculator, alpha y equals enter on this calculator, but alpha x on the newer versions. I'm sure I could update this calculator and I just still haven't. Anyways, we have a fraction. We're going to put one over we're going to put 1 over 4 and uh, times 6 squared, and that's going to give you 9. Just don't forget your square root of 3 afterwards. So it's going to give you 9 square root 3. However, our volume is 1 third, the area of the base, times that height of the solid. So what's that going to be? Our volume is 1 third multiplied by 9 rad 3 multiplied by that height of 10. If you put all that into the calculator the same exact way, you'll get the same answer. Remember, we're skipping over that square root of 3. So it'll be like 1 third times 9 times 10. 1 third times 9 is 3, and 3 times 10 is 30. So 30 rad 3. Don't forget your centimeters cubed or whatever the units are. It looks like it's all centimeters on this front page. Fine with me. Let's go on to the back side. So on the back side here, it gives you all these formulas that are all just all over the place. Um, just remember, you're adding the two different volumes together. That's all you're doing on this question. So let's make it happen. The volume of the square there is just going to be 5 cubed. I don't know why I said square. It's a cube. Squares are two-dimensional. Um, so the volume there is going to be uh, 5 cubed. That's going to be 125. And then the volume of the pyramid top there is going to be one third the area of the base. The area of the base is the square here. So we have the five and the five. That's going to be five squared. And the height it's given to you in the question is six. Um, multiplying all that together again, use your calculator if needed. But I don't really think we need to because six divided by three is two, and two multiplied by 25 is 50. Finally, our two answers combined, we're going to add those two bad boys together and get 175 centimeters cubed. We're getting closer to the end. We only have four more questions. Let's keep on going. Volume of the cone. The volume is one third pi r squared h. So this one, there's nothing to it. You just throw the formula in there and we're done. Like this one's kind of boring, to be honest. 9 squared times 22. It's kind of boring, but I'm cheating and using a calculator because that's a lot of multiplying there. So we're going to go ahead and get that fraction again. We got the 1 over 3. We skip the pi times 9 squared times 22, and you get 594. Um, don't forget your pi afterwards. Pi centimeters cubed. Looks like there's centimeters in this whole thing. I wonder why they did centimeters for every single problem here. It's kind of strange. Um, over here, it says to use a squared plus b squared equals c squared, but I say, nah, don't use your a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Remember your special triangles. If you don't have your special triangles written down, just write them down. Come on, just do it. You know, we got 5, 12, 24, 5, 5, 12, 13, 7, 24, 25. We got the 8, 15, 17. We got the 9, 40, 41. And this triangle here, we have a 6, we have an H, and we have a 10. So which one of these does it line up with? Well, if we notice, 6 divided by 2 is 3. 10 divided by 2 is 5. And lo and behold, our 3, 4, 5 triangle is true. So therefore, h is equal to 8. Um, finally, our volume is going to be nice and easy. 1 third times pi times that radius 6 squared times that height 
of eight that we just found. Throw all that into your calculator. What you gonna get? Well, um, I think you get ninety six, but I'm gonna, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna, you know. You do get 96. All right, so uh, you get 96 with a pi on it, um, and centimeter is cubed. Volume of a sphere. As of the recording of this today, this is the lesson we did in class um, just today. So remember that these are both nines because it's half of that 18, so that's the first thing. And your volume is 4 over 3 pi times 9 cubed. As a reminder, I'm going to go ahead and do the whole thing in the calculator just to show you. So we have our fraction first. We skip over the pi, and then we have a times 9. Now to get that 3 up there, we've been using that squared button for the 3 before, but now we need to click this button that's in the bottom right-hand corner of the screen right now, that caret key. The caret key is uh, in between the clear and the divide to the right of the tangent. If you hit that button, the uh, little box will pop up up there. So we can put a little 3. You get 972. Can't even see it because of the glare. 972. 972 pi centimeters cubed. One last problem here. They gave you that three. It's already in the question. There's nothing to even think about. This one is kind of a freebie. Um, and just to show you, you again are able to do this in your head if you wanted to. Three to the third, and then you're dividing by three is more like three squared. You're subtracting one from that exponent. So you get nine. Nine times two is 18. And that's the whole problem, really. That's it. Have a wonderful rest of your day, guys.